What's going on, everybody? It's Monday. Time for Swift News. Quick reminder, all the links to everything you see in the show are going to be on the GitHub repo that you see here. The GitHub repo will be linked in the description. And also, throughout the week, if you find something interesting that you think would be good for Swift News, tweet it out with hashtag Swift News. I'll check out that hashtag. Uh, it helps me find articles for the show. All right, let's throw up the rundown and get into it. First up, we have the next iteration of the iOS Developer Community Survey. Uh, they did this last year, and it's just a giant survey, tons of questions uh, put on by the community for the community. I want to be real clear about that. It's not some company collecting data. It's just a, a way to put together a bunch of interesting information you know, for the community. So if you were around last year, you, you're familiar with this. Uh, if you weren't, you can kind of go back and look at the results from last year's survey. I'm just going to pick one at random here. Um, let's do like your career, right? Just to give you a taste of what kind of questions are being asked here. You know, how long you've been involved. You can see uh, the different time frames. And by the way, on this note in particular, like what happened last year was a lot of people that are just learning iOS development felt like they shouldn't answer because they couldn't contribute. Absolutely, even if you've only been learning for a couple months, definitely hop in and answer because a lot of the answers were skewed, as you can see, by people that were a lot more experienced. And that may not represent the entire iOS developer community. But anyway, let me show you a couple more uh, examples, right? What are the following job roles you've performed? You can see a whole bunch of different uh, answers. Uh, and again, there's like 2,200 responses like per question. So uh, pretty good sample size. But anyway, literally hundreds of questions. Take the time, peruse through the results, look at the interesting information. And then again, participate this year. Back to uh, where I was, you can uh, fill out this year's survey so the information can be updated for this year. Next up, we have an article from Donnie Walls, uh, 10 things iOS developers should focus on in 2021. And right away, he says it too, right? I know this is a clickbaity title. The list is not relevant for everybody. Like he doesn't expect every iOS developer to learn everything on the list, of course, right? But what this is, is maybe you were looking to pick up a new skill in, in the new year. Um, here's just a list of things that, you know, you could potentially learn. Again, nobody's expecting you to learn everything on the list, but if you're looking for some inspiration, you know, maybe you can learn Combine and Donnie shares some resources on how to learn this stuff. Swift UI. Uh, XC test, right? Uh, collection views. Collection views is an interesting one because, you know, many of us have probably learned collection views a long time ago, but as of iOS 13, collection views have evolved. We have the diffable data source now. Uh, we have compositional collection view layout. So a lot has changed with collection views. So maybe go back and revisit that. But anyway, this is just a, a list of 10 topics uh, that you could uh, potentially learn. And then he shares some resources on like how to learn them. Next up, we have an older article from John Sandell, getting the most out of Xcode previews in Swift UI. And I wanted to share this because, you know, as a lot of us are starting to dip our toes in Swift UI, maybe we're shifting completely. Uh, learning how to use previews and getting the most out of them is, is pretty important. And because I kind of have a love-hate relationship with previews. Sometimes they work great. Sometimes they frustrate me. Um, it's still young, still early. But uh, John's article here has some tips to help you work with them. I'm just going to share a couple examples here. Uh, if you've ever tried to share a binding in, in your preview, you know you have to pass in like this constant value, right? For example, if you're passing in a binding Boolean, you have to say constant false. But this limits you to your UI not being interactive because it's a constant, it's always going to be false. Well, John shows you how you can write a quick extension on binding uh, right here to make that binding interactable, right? He calls it like mock false. So now you can actually interact with your UI and change that. So that's one little uh, tip. And then he goes on to show you how you can work with specific environments like dark mode, accessibility features like dynamic type, all that good stuff. Uh, so again, learning about previews, I think, is a good investment uh, to improve your workflow over time because where I'm at, and I'm saying this is wrong, by the way, I'm being very clear, but this is where I'm at with my learning evolution is sometimes I get so frustrated with previews that I'm just like, I just don't even use them, right? And, and I think that's the wrong answer because I should take the time and the investment to learn how to use them, learn the power of them so they can benefit me and not like hinder me, right? And the reason they're hindering me is due to a lack of like taking the time to learn them. So that's why I wanted to share this article. Moving on, we have a pretty in-depth article about getting started with instruments by uh, Leah here at the Ray Wonderlick website. Um, again, it's, it's pretty in-depth, so I'll just share some highlights, but if you're never used instruments and you wanna get started, you wanna kind of start learning what they even are and what they do, this is a great place to start. Uh, for example, the first one you're gonna get started with is the time profiler, as you can see here. And essentially what that does is probably too small on your screen, but it'll go through like you know method by method, function by function, and like time it 
So you can see somewhere in your code if maybe one function you wrote isn't very efficient and you can see that it's taking way long and it's hanging up your app. This is how you discover those sort of things. Uh, and then another one that's interesting that I have not used yet myself, but I've heard a lot of people on Twitter rave about this and how it really helps. And that is the visual memory debugger, right? Helps you find memory leaks in a very visually mapped way. So I need to read this article to learn more about that. Cause again, I've heard great things about this. I just haven't used it myself. But those are just two examples of how to get started uh, with instruments in Swift. And again, as you can see this table of contents on the left here, uh, it's a pretty in-depth article. So uh, if you're looking to dive in, here you go. On to the Twitter wisdom portion of the show. We'll start with the original tweet here. And this goes to kind of the soft skills of being an engineer. And this is more about like asking questions properly. So here's the original tweet, right? You know what triggers me? Engineers who can't form a proper question or submit a detailed bug report. Classic example, like my button isn't working. Well, you gotta tell them why, like, right? Like what's expected, what's happening? How is it implemented? What did you try? What is the exact environment, right? You, if you want people to like, like you've heard the term, right? Like help me help you. Like that's kind of what it is when you're asking these questions. If you just ask this vague question with no details, it's very hard for somebody to help you. Um, and that's kind of what Noah here is building on. And he goes on to a little thread here, but effective question asking is one of the most undervalued traits in an engineer, right? The secret is when you're asking a question, always over communicate. And I agree with this to a point, and I'm not saying Noah is suggesting this as well, definitely provide more information, but be very clear and concise about it, right? I've received plenty of questions on my courses or even just like YouTube videos where the person writes like three paragraphs, has a screenshot of an entire view controller. And, and like, yes, you're giving me all the information I need, but it's like, you make it seem like a homework assignment, you know, it's like way too much. So yes, provide all the information, but be very clear and very concise about it. And, you know, give the person that you want help from like the beginnings of how to help you. And if they want to like dive deeper, they can. Um, but, you know, be, be careful about oversharing. So it's like a fine line. Again, just in your mind, clear and concise. Moving on to AR Corner, we have one from Richard Key here. Uh, we've seen stuff like this before, right? But I wanted to share it because I haven't shared something like this in a while. But I think one of the biggest things is going to get disrupted, not disrupted, but improved um, with AR is like shopping experience. Again, imagine wearing your AR glasses, walking down the aisle with all these products and all the products are like animated and moving. Uh, so here's kind of like an example of that. Again, this is kind of like one of the one of the first things people did with like AR kit when this video stuff came out. So there's a little bit of a rehash, but I haven't shared something like this in a while. And I know I got a lot of newer viewers. So anyway, Pretty cool, like I said, the shopping experience with AR glasses is uh, gonna be crazy. And then finally, the LOL of the week here. Uh, this one really hit close to home, right? And you can, you can substitute game for app or whatever you're building, right? When you're prototyping the game, you love it, you're daydreaming, oh, this is gonna be so cool, so fun. And then making the game for real, it's, it's, not, it's, a, it's a lot different, right? And again, that goes for like any app. I'm sure you've done it, right? You've imagined this app. And then when you're actually building it, you're like looking like the girl on the right there. Anyway, that wraps it up for this week's episode of Swift News. We'll catch you in the next one.